Welcome! Bienvenidos, I am Leti and I'm a park ranger for Sloan Canyon National Conservation Area. And I'm Adamas, I'm a park ranger here at Ash Meadows National Wildlife Refuge, here on the ancestral homelands of the Nuwubi and Nuwu peoples, perhaps some of your neighbors. And we are here today for our Bird Beak Buffet Challenge. That's right. We're gonna learn about the exciting world of bird beaks. First, we're gonna get our hands on with some creepy skulls and learn why bird beaks are so diverse. Second, we're gonna to pretend to be those birds in our kitchen and play around with kitchen tools to understand how bird beaks are shaped based upon their food source. And finally, we are going to become engineers and we're going to invent something new based on the bird beaks that we just learned about. Well, I'm excited, let's go. Hey Letty, I got kind of a crazy question for you. So, have you ever wondered what it would be like? Like say you only had one tool to use for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but it was always the wrong tool. This sounds like a nightmare I once had. Awful. Like, what if you had a grapefruit for breakfast, but all you had was a spoon? Or a refreshing salad for lunch, but all you had was a knife? Or your delicious abuela soup, but all you had was a fork? Enough, I am getting stressed out thinking about this. It would take a gazillion years to eat like that. I would not survive. Exactly, and neither would a bird because while some birds like crows do use tools, most birds depend on whatever beak they were born with to eat every meal for the rest of their life. To survive, birds need to be adapted to the foods that they eat. And birds eat a lot of different foods, so they need to be have a diversity of beaks. So let's take a look. Wow, look at all these different skulls. They're so different from each other. We've got one that's you know, round and one that's kind of long, a really narrow one, a curved one, a really pointy one, and all because these birds must eat different foods. You know, Letty, you watch birds. I'm curious, can you help us identify what bird each of these skulls belong to and what kind of food they eat? Well, I don't want to give everything away. What about I give all of you the tools to be able to identify what birds belong to each of these skulls. So, how so? Well, we're going to go eat some yummy foods and see if we can find the tools that work for each food. Oh, that sounds really delicious and exciting. I can't wait. Awesome, let's go. All right, welcome to our bird beak buffet. Here we have five meals, we have orange juice in a bottle, we have a grapefruit in a bowl, we have some little snacks inside of a bowl, we have apples in water, and some little leafy vegetables inside of water. And then we also have five tools and five or so skulls. So we want to see which of these tools match with which of these foods and then we're going to make an educated guess and figure out which of these skulls match one of these combinations so let's give it a try yeah i can't wait this all looks so delicious and i can't wait to figure out what bird these are based on the tools and the foods they match with so it looks like we've got our first three meals uh are representing like desert like mojave desert shrubland and then we have these two that represent more like wetlands, like some of them that we have here at Ash Meadows. Um, and it looks like we've got five different tools, a tweezer, scissors, skewers, a straw, and tongs. Hmm. Let's start with this one. This is juice that's supposed to represent nectar and a flower. Which tool would you use? Hmm? 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 Mm. Mm. Uh, I take to wait too long. What about 
Mm. That works. That really hit the spot. Now I'm not so angry anymore. Is that what y'all chose? Because that's great. So the straw works with the nectar. So which of these schools do you think would match with this combination? Is it this one? Oh, yes. That's right. So this school is the one that we match with this combination. So we know the skull, we know the meal and the tool. Which bird do you think it matches? What is this species? Teeny tiny skull that has a straw-like beak that would drink nectar. Hmm. Is it the hummingbird? Is that the one you guessed? That's right. Well, hummingbirds have these specialized tiny straw-like beaks that let them dip into little flowers and drink the nectar. And these little birds are extraordinary because they're so tiny, yet they can survive so well in all the environments out here. And they, you will find them out in all of the Mojave Desert. So. What exciting, what an exciting find. That's cool. Every time I use a straw now, Letty, I'm going to remember you and the hummingbird and how they can pollinate the flowers by drinking these delicious, sweet things. All right, so second meal. Looks like, again, we're in the shrublin and we've got this grapefruit that's supposed to be like a rabbit. Uh, it's like got this thick skin. What tool do you, would you use to break this open? Hmm. Let's see. Hmm? It'll take years. Oh, that doesn't help too much, though. Uh, hmm. This one? Whoa. Look at that. Oh, I see a so, little blood coming out yeah, of there. Yeah, it's kind of, it's really tore through the flesh and got to the, the insides. Is yeah. that the tool you chose? Well, that's great. Now, if we know that the scissors work the best with a grapefruit or a jackrabbit, which school of these do you think match this combination? This one? This one? Yes, this one. Well, did you see there? They have a hook-like beak that works perfectly to catch on to that and, and, and take everything outside of that little meal. So great choice. Now, what kind of bird would have this skull? A bird that has a hooked shaped beak that eats meat and tears them apart. Starting to have flashbacks of Jurassic Park. Well, if you chose the red-tailed hawk, you're correct. The red-tailed hawk has specialized hooked beaks and sharp claws that let them rip open the skin of animals and be able to take up little pieces of that meat and gobble them down. They also have, as you can see in this awesome beak, or this awesome skull, they have these forward-facing eyes that help them narrow down what their prey is and go in there and catch their meal. So, that's a scary wow. one. Wow, uh, next time I eat a grapefruit, I'm gonna have a whole different experience thinking about that hawk. All right, meal three. Looks like we've got all these noodles in here that are supposed to represent fast little lizards and insects. Hmm. Which tool would you use? I can use chopsticks. Oh, that kind of works. Kind of slips slips out real fast. What about, ooh, and then these are awesome. Yeah, oh, oh this one kind of slips away. We can get some. What about, this. You think this one? Oh wow, look at that. It just picks them up like, real fast. Huh. Is that the tool you chose? Because that's correct. 
so if we have this combination here, the, the tweezers and the little snacks, which of these beaks would you think would work best for this meal? This one? That's right. Yes. This is the skull that would work best. As you can see, it has little tiny, tiny, uh, sharp beak that allows it to hold on to little meals like that. That's great. But we can only see the skull. And if I'm not a skull expert, do you know what bird this is? The bird looks like it's maybe like this tall. I imagine like trying to catch insects and lizards with that long, thin beak. It would have to be really fast. You're a fast bird that lives in the desert. Have you seen it? Because I have. This is one of the most amazing birds out here, the Roadrunner. And I'm sure you've seen the, the show, but this Roadrunner absolutely loves eating insects and lizards and sometimes even small rodents. And they use this tiny specialized beak to help them catch those things. How amazing is that? Wow. Now whenever I like take out a splinter from my finger, I'm going to think, meep, meep. All right, let's take a look. We got a fourth meal. These are in the wetlands. All right, well, this one, I don't know if you can see, it's water in here. Uh, this represents big fish. Uh, there's these chunks of apples. Uh, hmm. Which tool do you think would work best for this one? I mean, this one looks like obvious. Like, you can get that one, grab the same one. Oh, and it, it's coming up empty beaked here. What about, hmm. Chopsticks or whoa, that was cool. Oh man, this one's a lot more fun and effective than even that one. Is this the tool you chose? Because that's right, the skewers work the best for this one. But what is the school that belongs to this combination? Have you thought about that? This one, great. As you can see, this looks so much more like the skewers than the other beaks. And this can easily catch one of these little apple slices or fish. But the most important part is, what is the species or the bird that has this beak? So it looks like a pretty big bird. I'm guessing this bird's like, almost as tall as me and just has to live in the water, but you know, has to be pretty tall to be able to spear fish. What's a tall bird that lives in the water? Well, if you thought the great blue heron, you're right. The great blue heron has a specialized long spear-like beak and a long neck that allows it to just sneak attack onto its prey. And it also has long legs that allows it to wade through the water creepily while it looks for its prey. How awesome is that? Wow. This brings me back to Jurassic Park, like you said. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, just talk about bobbing for apples or fish. Maybe that's where people learn to spearfish. All right, so our final meal. Huh, I guess we only have this one tool left. Kind of obvious. So this represents algae and like grass and stuff in a pond. Uh, let's check this out. Wow, I got almost everything in, in one big swoop. Um, so I'd say this probably is the champion, but just to be sure, let's let's test out a couple other ones. Let's see if the heron. Uh, maybe a, a, a maybe little a bit. A little bit. Or I don't know. Scissors. It would just cut it yeah. into pieces. Huh. It would not work. So I'd say definitely this one. But well, that's right. That's right. And although, you know, this one could definitely carry on fish as well, it's mostly specialized for this. And, but we haven't chosen the skull that belongs to this one. 
And we have two schools left and only one meal. Which school is it? This one? You're right! Yes, and as you can see, it has this very scoop-like bill, just like the scooper. They're actually pretty similar, as you see. And this allows them to really scoop up anything that it has, whether it is algae or insects or fish. So actually, this one could also come over here and scoop this up, but these are a little too big. But, but most importantly, what bird is this? So a bird that lives in a wetland with a flat-like bill that would eat algae and grass. You know, I swear I've seen this bill somewhere before. Hmm. And you totally have. Any guesses? That's right, the mallard. Mallards are one of the most common birds in the United States. They love the water. I'm sure you, if you've gone to a pond or you've gone to a lake, you've seen a mallard before. And these mallards, the males have a, a green head and the females have a brown head. And they really love hanging out in water, scooping up the algae, and they also scoop up insects and fish, like we said before about this cool scoop. Great job. Huh. Wow, Letty, like this has been so delicious and I've learned so much. I can't believe, again, just how diverse all of these beaks are because they're all specialized in a different way to eat certain foods. That just amazes me. Well, I know I'm getting hungry just looking at all this. Would you like to join me in the Clean Plate Club? Yes, claro, let's go. All right, yeah. <laughs> Letty, we've learned so much from you today. I'm so happy we could join you and you showed us your bird beak buffet. Like just to review, we learned about how birds have a variety of different beaks because of the variety of different foods that they need to eat. And two, how those bird beaks are like survival tools that allow birds to eat specific foods for the purpose of survival in their particular environments. You know what? I'm so fascinated with birds and their adaptations now. I'd love to learn more. Is there something else we can do? Well, if you, all of you are interested, you should come bird watching or birding with me out in the Mojave Desert. Check out our website for other videos called the Bird and Binoculars video, and you'll be able to learn all about the birds. Oh, that's so awesome. And you know what? I just came up with another idea. Ooh, what is it? Remember that weird question I asked you before about what would you do if you only had one tool to eat all of your meals with, but it was always the wrong one? Uh, please don't remind me. Well, Letty, we're humans. That means we can invent our own tools using the knowledge we now have about bird beaks and their adaptations. That's true. Well, let's put on our engineering hats and get out there and find some cool tools for our favorite foods. So for this activity, you can print out our worksheet or make your own. So for the first part, you have brainstorming your beak. You have three columns with five rows. In each row, you're going to write down your favorite foods. Then you're going to think of a bird. You can do some research, a bird that can eat those kind of foods. And finally, in the third column, you're going to draw the beak of that bird. What kind of beak do they need? So for instance, I love pizza. So do ravens. I've seen them eating it. They can tear it apart with that beak, so I'm going to draw that picture. Uh, for crushing nuts, the gross beak's a great example, and they've got that thick beak. And now what I'm going to do is combine all five of those beaks into one to show what kind of bird I would need to be to be able to eat all my favorite foods. And then the fun part, color that beak in. Uh, and then the smart part, you're going to label the beak and show what kind of feature it has that helps it eat those foods. Like, oh, it's sharp for ripping apart pizza, or it's thick for crushing nuts. And finally, you're going to come up with a really cool patent name, like Curry Nutcracker. Well, that's hilarious. I'm excited to see all of yours, so make sure to send all your great inventions our way to Sloan or Ash Meadows so we can send you a surprise. Y'all come out to Ash Meadows and say hello. And to Sloan Canyon. Hasta, Hasta luego. luego.